Hi guys, thanks for tuning in. In this DaVinci Resolve tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to correctly convert your log footage into Rec. 709. There are multiple ways to do it, and I'm gonna show you all of them in a quick manner and also explain to you which one is the best and also the correct one. Coming up. Hi guys, my name is Paul, I'm a German-based cinematographer and my channel is all about filmmaking, gear reviews, but also DaVinci Resolve tutorial, such as this one. So if you like that kind of content, please subscribe and support the channel. It's free and it helps me. <laughs> so let's directly jump into the computer. So as we can see here, here I have two clips from a recent project that I did. Um, both of them are in logs, so you see they are lacking in contrast and also in saturation. I think the first method that everybody knows is a LUT, a so-called lookup table. And here we can use one, um, just go on notes here and also on the left side on LUTs. And here I have my red LUTs because I have recorded that on a red and Rec. 709 because that's the color space that we want to work in or that we want to deliver. And here I have this one, this is my favorite one. And already my image is looking much better, right? And there's nothing wrong with that to do that. It's uh, very important though to use the manufacturer LUT, a so-called technical LUT. That's not a creative luck, uh, LUT that's giving you like a um, teal and orange look or something like that. These LUTs are usually made for the Rec. 709 working space or color space. And this technical LUT is to go onto your log gamma and then transform it into Rec. 709. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with that, but uh, as I've said, it's important to use the manufacturer LUT because that way you're gonna ensure that also contrast and also color is handled correctly and everything will look as it's supposed to look. The problem in working with LUTs is that LUTs are destructive. Meaning that if a signal, if you convert it with a LUT to Rec. 709 and the signal is clipped, you can't get it back. That's uh, also the downside and therefore it's important to use the right LUT. There's also another option called color management and that one you're gonna access if you go onto the settings right on the bottom corner here on the style and you go on the left side to color management and da, Vin da Vinci YRGB color managed and automatic color management is checked and hit save and we already can see that both of our clips are converted into Rec. 709. Wow, and that works really well. And that's because DaVinci is recognizing in which color format I shot it and then will directly convert it for me correctly into Rec. 709. But the problem with that method though is that it only works when you're working in um, a raw format as I did here with these clips. Um, let's say you shot on MP4 with the Canon or with the Sony or something like that or even in ProRes then it might happen that the Vinci is not recognizing from which camera that clip is coming from and nothing will actually happen. So therefore it's also not the best idea to use that every single time. Yeah, you can also say, okay, a uh, log format is also just lacking in contrast and saturation. I can do it myself. All right, let's do that. Um, let's go on to curves here, add some intensity to the backs and also to the highs and uh, make it something like that and just pump in a lot of saturation and hey, already it looks great. <laughs> yes, it looks. Um, but the problem with that method is that you don't know um, how much contrast you add and also it can happen that a color shift can happen that your skin tones doesn't look as they're supposed to because you're shifting contrast and uh, saturation values so therefore it is also not a correct method of conversion. So best thing to do it is if you have like three nodes open or let's say you hit option S and you can add one right or alt S on a Windows PC and on the last node, and that's important, you're gonna uh, make the color space transform. You find it in the effects tab. And if you hover over here, you can also type it in or it's pretty wide on the top. And then throw it on my last node and then nothing is happening, right? So we need to adjust a few things here. Input color space and input gamma. So here DaVinci is asking in which format did we shot it? 
Okay, so here I'm gonna go into black magic. No, no, no. Right at the bottom here, I have red, white, gamut, RGB. That's the color space I was recording. And my input gamma is red log 3G10. And here, use timeline, it uses the information that are set to the timeline. And that works perfectly fine. Uh, I can also apply that to my other clip. And also that one looks pretty fine. Um, I can also, and the great thing is, if I shot on Canon, no worries here. I can set it to Canon Cinema Gamut and then yeah, Canon Log 2, Canon Log 3, whatever I shot it, or Sony, Blackmagic, Panasonic, DJI, you name it. So that's the great thing here, but what's the benefit of using um, the note at the end? Well, so let's um, add a few more notes here and here, right in the middle. I have my color space transform, just naming it real quick. Um, and in the previous notes, that one here, I'm still in the log gamma curve, meaning in here I have much more control about exposure, contrast, color, everything like that. And after the color space transform here, I'm already working in the Rec 709 color space, meaning the color space of Rec 709 has much less contrast, much less color information and much less to work with. So if I make adjustments to the exposure, the image might clip a little bit harsher or a little bit faster than it would here. Here I want to do it because here I have the most important information that I need and that's also very important. The disadvantage of using a color space transform is the following. Uh, currently, no not Siri, if we go back into effects, it doesn't support any every color camera manufacturer. So we have like the the famous ones so like Panasonic, Sony, Red, Ari, um, you named them, DJI, but we don't have Zcam and we don't have Kinefinity or something like that. I hope that Blackmagic will implement them at some point, but for now we can't use actually color space transform if you're working in a color space of these cameras, so therefore it's better to use the manufacturer's LUT. And from here, I can start working and color grading to manip manipulate the image to whatever I want to. So I hope this video was helpful to you. And if it was helpful to you, please consider subscribe and smash that like button. That really helps the channel and helps me. <laughs> and if you have any further question, and also tell me in the comments below how you like to work it and if you have any problems working with that, and then we can chat in the comments below. And I'm gonna see you in my next one. Cheers.